the Rikishi Fatu Off the Top Podcast. Let's go. Rikishi Fatu, all y'all ready? We the ones. It's 2024. Keep it locked on the Rikishi Fatu Podcast. Off the top. We gon' talk about everything. Everything wrestling, everything hip-hop. Keep it locked. It's time to smarten up. I'm a bartender master. Mm. Alex, the bartender master. The drink master. There it is. There it is right there, the, the drink, drink master. master. Alex, the drink, the drink master. master. That just sounds better. Yes, sir, the drink master, baby. Yeah, the mm. drink master. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. I am your co-host, T. MD. We want to thank our sponsor, Knox Pro. That's right, based out of Van Nuys, California. A. You want to know everything Knox Pro, then just log on to their website, www.knoxpro.com. Big Quiche, welcome back to U.S. Soil. How you feeling, man? Big Quiche. We got drinks coming. Oh, uh, oh we, I, I don't we, know. I thought that might wake you up a little bit over there. How you do, man? I know you got jet lag. I know you got jet lag. Man, I'm I'm exhausted. Joe. You just came back from the UK. Welcome back to US Soil. How was your trip? A big shout out to uh, all the fans out there in UK uh, for the love of wrestling. You know, also my boys out there, uh, uh, gimmick promotions. You know, help you know work all the logistics and so forth. But it was good to see the fans. I've, I haven't been there in Manchester, England, well over. Maybe about twenty something years. Twenty seven years. Wow. Yeah, about twenty something plus years, okay. and. You know, that flight, man, it was like every bit of like 12 hours from here to LAX. Then you get there and then you're waiting for the other three hours. You got to go through all these different securities and so forth. And, uh, you know, of course, I played the blind man gimmick. Yeah, I saw, you you yeah. had a cart. You uh, had a, a yeah. motorized cart this yeah. time. Well, That's blind, the only way to go. Well, blind you know, blind people can't see where they're going, so I, I definitely need <laughs> I need some uh, uh, assistance. Yeah, you know? yeah. And so, yeah, and so another, you know, took another hour and a half uh, from uh, uh, London Heathrow into Manchester, England. Okay. And I tell you, Joe, you know, I, I flew first class all the way through, but... Mm -hmm. You know, the first-class seats are just, you know, it's different, you know. Big shout-out to British Airways. I posted about them on, uh, you know, X on Twitter. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, it was nice that, uh, you know, they took care of the VIP. Okay. Your Hall of Famer. But I'm good, That's man. Right. I'm home. Yep. You know, the fans out there, big shout-out to them. They talked about, you know, the Rikishi Off the Top podcast. You know, you got some fans as well as over there. And they were talking about how good of a chemistry Oh. You know, and uh, I did a Q and A there for mm -hmm. a bit, and you know, a lot of the fans were, you know, talking about the bloodline. Of course, they're still trying to get me to spit that out. Well, am I going to be a part of blah blah blah? But you know, I, I I just prefer for the fans to wait. You know? Well, we're going to get into that in a, in a few seconds. Yeah. Um, but before sure. um, you know, we get a, started with the show. Um, that's an awesome sweater. Thank uh, you. That looks Thank like you. a, 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 a yeah. limited release right there. Um, I, I got your size extra small. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Here we go. I do not wear extra small, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Well, you're losing weight, dude. Yes, sir. You know what? I, I gave up you're coffee. Good. I gave up coffee. Oh, you uh, did? Yes, sir. Because, you know, I I, I, I just, uh, I don't need that extra energy. I already, I already got it. I'm already wound up. But I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you uh, yeah, for man. noticing. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, uh, before we, uh, we go to commercial, I, I got to say, rest in peace, Virgil. Virgil know, passed away. Man. man. It's just, uh, you know, just... Last time I seen him, it was probably at a convention up in New Jersey. And I, I was, you know, just shocked. I was on my way to UK and, you know, just, you know, seeing these news of, of Virgil is just, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, my feelings are just numb now. I know, because I know. it's always a wrestler, like, you know, you just seen him, Joey. And then you never know, that's going to be the last time you see a person, man. And that's why... I like to take time to take photos with and with a lot of the boys and you know also the females of the industry because even the staff, even those that are that help around the boys, I always like you know, making memories and take time to shoot. But Virgil, man, you know he was a wonderful guy. He was uh, with us at uh, my uncle Alpha's place in Hampton, Connecticut. 
he stayed with us, he, you know, he, and, uh, you know, we trained him and so forth. And, uh, you know, he was, he was just a, he, he was just a good dude, man. He was a good dude and definitely going to miss him. Big, uh, you know, condolences to his family and friends and, you know, all the fans out there, all the guys that, you know, was with Virgil 24 seven, man, big shout out to y'all. And, uh, you know, I can't say what, we're going to definitely miss him. Do you have any funny Virgil stories? Oh, Virgil used to talk shit all the time. <laughs> you know, when we're playing basketball or something, you know, at the gym there, because we would get away. We trained so much with Uncle Alpha. So finally, when we get to the gym, you know, you know finish with the workout, of course, you know, Mike Jones, who was Virgil, he was like a bodybuilder back in the day. So he would always come and just flex his you know, his biceps, his triceps, and all that stuff. But then we would take him up on a basketball court inside the gym. So by the time he comes up in there, you know, his muscles are all tight from working out. And that's where we just start. Just You talk about foul city. <laughs> a bunch of some noise just running into him. And, yeah, so there was a lot of shit talking about he he, he, he he talked a lot of shit when he was playing basketball. He was actually pretty good, too. Yeah, uh, so you know, but, uh, you know, gonna miss him, man. Yes, uh, rest in peace, Virgil, man. Uh, he was part of the golden uh, age of wrestling, and he is, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the most uh, famous and recognized uh, managers slash valets. Yeah, hey, uh, let's get us a drink, man. Yes, sir. You know, I just got up. It's about three thirty in the morning in UK. Okay. Yo, Alex, uh, uh, drink, drink master. master. Where the drink master here? Let's try to get us. Uh, I know last last week uh, last week you hit us with something different now. What are you going to hit us with this week? Uh, we've got something a little special right here. I, I like to call this one the Suicide Bomb. Suicide Sui Blog or Suicide Bomb? Uh, well, you know, it suicide. Your, uh, I'm into both. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, a couple All more right. shots. We'll be both. Hey, yo, Big well, Keish. Welcome back to the U.S. Uh, hey. Good to see you again. Yes, sir. Big shout out to Knox Pro for looking after the show for me. Yes, sir. Sponsoring. Mm-hmm. Hey, yo, you know, speaking of sponsor, mm, damn. Hot doggy. Damn. Mm. Um, drink master. Mm hmm. This has to be better than last week. I mean, this guy can make some drinks. Mm. Yeah, what I do you think? think? Yes, oh, tasting, we, we need to keep the drink master around, please. <laughs> I'm tasting like some cucumber. Yeah. It tastes pretty healthy, but there's a little mm. kick there. I'm like, so it's like yeah. a health drink at the same time, and mm. you're getting the kick of some alcohol. That's awesome. Mm. Cheers. Cheers again. Salute, salute. Um, mm. How do you say salute and Samoan again? Is it... Uh... Manuia. Manuia. Yeah, Manuia. Manuia. That's what we say, Manuia. But by the time we're all drunk and stuff, mm. it turns into Ufa. <laughs> <laughs> I know what that one means. Well, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> right, you know, that's just us, right? Anyhow, if you guys yes, are sir. riding and you listen to this podcast... Wherever part of the world you're at, I want to personally say, Joey's like, I mentioned this before our show, that I've been monetizing, you know, the show. And, man, the numbers that we are getting, you know, I got to say thank you to all these fans out there that are just taking the time to listen in to the, to the podcast. You know, I came from overseas, which was 30,000 people at this event for two days. And the majority of the time was at my signings was talking about how fun the podcast was. And awesome. who is that guy that you're, you know, that's on your show? I said, let me throw in a plug for it. Oh, that's TMD. Awesome. The ladies pets, the men's men regret. Oh, yeah, I forgot the whole thing. <laughs> but I didn't go over. Because I know David was standing by me. David was like, ah, don't plug him. Don't plug him. I was like, man, that's my host right there. Oh, man. But that... yeah, the, the fans would just, you know, just want to take the time to say thank you to them, you know. Wherever part of the world you're at, being the cold, the, you know, the, the the snow, wherever. Yes, sir. Just, you know, make sure to log in, thank, subscribe, all that good stuff. Because we just keep it real here. Yep. You know, they ain't no, we don't script nothing, we don't. Everything comes off the yeah. top. So, what is happening man? since I, I've been gone in the wrestling world? I tell you what, um, uh, we, we've seen the Bloodline uh, promos, and they've been brutal. So, uh, we're going we're gonna to get to that and more okay. when we return back with more Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. Rikishi Fatu, Off the Top. We're coming right back.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back with more Rikishi Fatu off the top. Man, I'm exhausted, Joey. I know, I know. That's a lot. I, that is a lot. Yeah. You know, and you're here uh, and, with the show, and we're here to talk to the fans, and you know what? Because I'm obligated. <laughs> I'm you know obligated to have this show be the number one podcast wrestling show slash hip-hop in the country. Can I get, can I get a crowd reaction? There you go. You That's hear what I'm talking right. about. That's what I'm That's talking right. about. All right, let me save my energy. So you know, uh, there's a lot <sighs> going on. I noticed in the Bloodline uh, world. Um, okay, man, we've had two heel promos from the New Rock uh, era, uh, it, which is it's today's era is different than the '90s when he was cutting heel promos. So far, what is your take on the heel promo uh, that the Rock's been cutting? Well, I'll tell you what. Back with the 500, it's probably five thousand dollars now. With those Versace shirts, they back in, they back. In, he said something about what uh, it looked cool. It's, it's good to be cool again. Mm -hmm. I, I, well, you can't, you can't knock the bloodline. Mm. Every time you know the fans would call what they think is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. As always, the dynasty go left. You think you're gonna have that answer there? The dynasty goes right. And okay. so you know what? It, it's hell. They should just call WrestleMania. The Samoan Dynasty WrestleMania. Yeah, you're right. You know what I mean? Now you you got the biggest movie star in the world. What they say? They one of my one of my guys here, the staff here that does a research talking about. He makes eight hundred mil. Yo's, yo yo's, <laughs> <laughs> yo's. Yeah, right. <laughs> eight hundred mil. Whew. Whew. Come on now. People want him to be president. <sighs> Like, you know what? That's how uh, how much I, stroke The I, Rock has. I'll tell you right now, I'll be the first one to go on record. Mm -hmm. If in case Dwayne Johnson, the people's champion, the bloodline, Samoan dynasty, goes and actually throws his name into the hat of running for president, mm -hmm. come on. Come on, the rock bottom will just be rock bottoming everybody. Come on now, out there. Anybody don't listen, boy. Come on. Yep. And you know he 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 just sharp as hell. And that dome he's got. Uh huh. You know he know how to make money. Speaking of which, you know, and we know he's smart. Um, I notice uh, something that when he's in the ring, as so far yeah. with these two promos, when the bloodline throws up the one. Yeah. He throws it up a little differently. Why do you think that is? You know what I. Uh... I, uh, it looks like, an, it, well, I would probably think it would be a form of a sign shoot. Or it could be loser. Or, I don't know, level up. Hmm. Because, yeah. I, I, um, and I, and I noticed there was a still shot of Paul Heyman looking at the rock. And he's looking at the uh, the way he throws it and the way the rest of the group throws it. It's a little different. And the look of Paul Heyman's face, you know, it, it, it might tell you there might be a little dissension already. Like I said before, there is no family better in entertainment or whatever. There is no family that does not have drama. But I'll see some of the, you know, the teasers that fans send me, some emojis, blah, blah, blah. And every time I see The Rock, you know, they all raise up that hand. You can see in Roman's eyes, like, you know, you know, he he is like there's something going on. Like he's not trusting the rock possibility. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you're so used to being number one, oh, number exactly. number one the man. Mm -hmm. And then you got, you know, the greatest. The goat. The goat mm -hmm. steps through and man, he's just He's uh, gotta you know, share that spotlight. So, you know, well, it, it'll be very, very interesting, you know, as WrestleMania get close and see where where all this goes with Jimmy and Jay, uh, you know, The Rock, Roman Reigns, you know, Seth Rollins and uh, 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 Cody Rhodes. You know, and where, where, what part does Solo play into? You know, and also, you know, a uh, longtime friend, the wise man, Paul Heyman, you know, and speaking of that, you know, did you, you just see that? Uh, I just seen this. Hall of Fame, baby. Yeah. He, big he's going to join you. He's going to join you. And, you know, I'm so happy to finally, you know, see him take 
his rightful seat into the Hall of Fame. You know, he's a, he's a, he's one of the best managers in the history. And the greatest I minds, feel, too. One of the in greatest professional minds. Race. Greatest minds. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy here, he's, he's just, you know, he's dedicated his life to the industry. And I'm sure to a lot of people, too, that, that you know, that he's helped on the way, you know, on the way there. So, but, you know, I text him, you know, this morning when I got, you know, when I woke up still, you know, dizzy and opened up my Instagram and seen that somebody tagged me on there. So, you know, it'll be interesting, you know, I'll, I'm sure I'm going to, you know, make my way to the Hall of Fame uh, to be able to honor him and, uh, you know, uh, show up to listen to his speech. Um, Cause you ran with Paul Heyman back in the eighties. Yeah, he's been around your yeah. family since the eighties. Y'all go back. forty-seven plus years. Y'all go back. So is it safe yeah. to say he's a family friend, or is he more of just a business associate? It, it, to me, it seems like he's he's probably like you know he's one of the uh, uh, he's a really good family friend. I mean, he's been there for like you said forty years. Y'all go back. Yeah, I, will. I mean, after forty plus years, Joey. Yes, you know what I mean. Uh, He's been with us, you know, through different uh, factions with me and Samu and, you know, SST. And uh, back in the day through WCW, he was the first one that hollered at us to bring us in. And we were the first, uh, you know, Paul Heyman guys. You know, so, yeah, you know, not only we're good uh, employee friends, but we're good personal friends as well with the family. You know, our family loves Paul and respects his decision. He always... Uh, we keep up time to time. I know they're busy all the time, but mm -hmm. every now and then when I see something, I'll text him and, you know, just congratulate and thank you for, you know, I'm always that father thing, you know, look after my boys out there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look after my boys, you know, so he's in no worries. So he, he's worked with so many of your family members, which brings me to my next um, question. Um, going through the YouTube page, the Instagram yep. page, I'm looking at all these comments mm -hmm. and a lot of the comments and a lot of people want to know who do you think is the next bloodline member that is going to be called up? Man. There's a lot of talk about... You know, uh, well, who was it? Who, who, there's I mean, a lot of talk there, about there, who? There, you there's give two me... names. There's two names. Okay, so I'm assuming there. it's Jacob That's and one. Zilla. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Zilla, I can, I, I've never had the opportunity to meet Zilla. Uh, I've, had, yeah. I've met every Fod to under the sun just about, but not Zilla. Mm -hmm. This guy is a monster. His arms... I saw him take a picture with Booker T. Yeah. His arms were the size of Booker T. And that's that's a shoot. He is uh, he's huge. definitely in shape. He, and he looks and they yeah. both look great. And as a matter of fact, I just saw Jacob in Journey in Los Angeles a few days ago out here in LA. And Jacob looks awesome. He, he looks yeah. great right now. Um who do you, in your opinion, who, who do you think would be the next bloodline member to be called up? Um, well, you know, I'd have to go with Jacob. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as for uh experience wise and and ready to fill shoes, uh, whatever the WWE throws at him. This kid is, you know, I advocated for him all the time, you know, and w once I found out he was a free agent, it was me doing my part to be able, uh, to, be able to, you know, have the another member of the bloodline who I felt was ready. You know, I'll, I'll sit and I'll watch and see which kid, or, you know, who's ready to take that next step. Because we all know, you know, taking that big step to WWE, it's not an easy step. You got to be prepared mentally. You got to be prepared inside the squared circle and outside the squared circle. And so me and Jacobs, we've been talking, you know, maybe twice a week and so forth, you know, just giving him some uh, encouragement. You know, now it's time. You know, you want to change your life where well, the blessing's falling right on, on your lap right now. You know, just get in the gym, eat, sleep, the gym, and you know, cut your circle. The the ones that are that brings negative to you to your circle. You don't need to be around stuff like that. And you just wait till the call comes, because the WWE and AEW, New Japan, they all know this kid is a free agent. And you know, if you ask me where Kishi would like to see Jacob go to, yes, sir. I would like to see Jacob join the bloodline mm -hmm. because that's where he needs to be. And I'll tell you why. Because for the first time, this kid has got time to showcase his skill 
on, if you ask me, one of the biggest stages in the world is WWE. Whether you get on the Monday Night Raw, 15 million people watching. SmackDown, 20-something plus million watching. And then you get on to any pay-per-view. And I've always pictured Jacob in there. And I would see him not dance with some of the uh, enhancement talent. Mm -hmm. But I would always want to see Jacob dance with guys like Cody Rhodes. Mm -hmm. Dance with Seth Rollins. Dance with, uh, let's go, Rey Mysterio. Dance with, uh, you know, uh, uh, Dolph Ziggler. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Randy Orton. You know what I mean? I mean, all these, it needs to be a top player to really bring this kid's skills out. And that's how good I'm saying what Jacob is. And so WWE, all the agents back there, all AEW, anybody, any one of you guys step up, and if you, in case, are interested in signing Jacob Fatu, trust you me, you will not be disappointed at what type of talent you just signed for your roster because this kid's going to bring it, man. And so, you know, that's that's my take on Jacob. So let's move on to Zilla Fatu. Yes, sir. Zilla Fatu looks good, but it's more than just looking good in professional wrestling. You know, I know that, you know, if his father was alive, which is my brother, that he would want this kid to learn the ins and outs of professional wrestling, that this is not a game. Uh, he needs to understand and be taught is that this business, you can either make yourself or break yourself. You can be signed today and be gone tomorrow. Is to understand that your actions uh, that you have to have uh, responsibility because now your life is about to change in a different lens of camera, meaning people all over the world, if they didn't know you then, well, damn it, they're going to know you now. Mm -hmm. And so you always got to, you, you got to be walking on eggshells and, and so if you're not smart. But if you're smart, mm -hmm. which I would never send any one of my... Right family members to WWE or they AEW smart. if they're not smart because we just can't, you know, we've, we've, we've done too much in the WWE. You know, I, I like the WWE is like our home, 75 plus years. And so we already have that image of that respect level that anybody we vouch for that they're already ready, meaning yes, ends it out. Yes, sir. You know, you're, you're part of the boys mm -hmm. Now you're not you're not like a fan looking in anymore. It's okay to be a fan, but you know when you're in the locker room, you know locker room etiquette. Mm -hmm. Last thing I want to do is you come talk to me about your mask last night, or you know what I mean. I, I just got off the phone with my little grandson and I miss him, and I'm there just scrolling through, you know, the videos that I have a little bit of time before I you know get dressed to go on TV. And so I'm looking at it, and then somebody comes and want to talk about their match and just while well, I'm, you know, the only little time to look at my grandson. And so that will leave a bad taste in my mouth. Because after that, I, I would just give him that look like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And so knowing me, though, I would probably sit him back down. Yes, sir. And then teach him. Mm -hmm. You know, so. But, you, you know, Silla, Silla got, he's got skills. You know, I, in due time, I wish he was out here in Los Angeles, California, where I can have hands on with him and really put him through it. But, you know, he's under good hands over there with Booker T in Houston, you know, and I actually text, uh, uh, text him and uh, said, you know, don't hold back on him. You know, just let him, let him feel what it is and let him understand what it is. Because he's got a second chance now, you know. I think before, Booker kicked him out from yes, over sir. there for whatever happened. And, mm -hmm. I don't ever like to understand and, and know anything bad, like whatever, you know what I mean? That's just, just negative stuff. What I need to do, uh, figure out is a solution to move forward. So I'm glad they were able to, you know, they took that picture together. That's how I knew they kind of, you know, mash, smashed everything together. So, yes, sir. So, yeah, but Zilla, I say give Zilla maybe a couple years in the independent circuit. Okay. He's got to realize and feel that money, that $30 or $40 of booking, it keeps you hungry. 
He's got to understand how, you know, learn how to sell his merch and what type of quality of merch, what type of 8 by 10s You know, I need to listen how his spill is when he's talking to fans and how he engages with them. You know, I need to see how, you know, is he an early bird when we're traveling or is he one of those late guys? I need to see when we go out, like, at night. Is he one of those, you know, fall easy into the traps of partying all night? You know, does he does he pay his bill and leave or does whatever? You know, all any signs that I see is it's a bad habit sign, this is where I need to correct him. And he needs to listen to those that understand. So, you know, I say give him two years. I think he'll he he'll be uh he'll be solid on that end. Yes, sir. But he's an athlete. Mm. You know, I've seen his matches with him and Jacob at GCW, mm-hmm. which, you know, I look forward to to visiting those guys when they come to LA, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I and you know, thank you to uh, for GCW for, you know, giving my nephews uh, an opportunity. Jacob, yeah, yeah Jacob will get booked anywhere, mm-hmm. but when you're a new cat like Zilla, you know what I mean? He, he needs to realize that you know, he understands that this is the love from people that love his father. What type of giant icon his father was in this industry? So he's he is not easy for him. He's going to have to fill those shoes, if not even more. And so whenever, you know, you get an opportunity for independent shows to invite a guy like Zilla with that type of uh, experience, you know, it, it's, a, it's, it's a thank you. You know what I mean? So, yes, but, you know, let's, let's uh, you know, two years, uh, I look forward for good things for, for Zilla. But Jacob Fatu... I'll say it once and I'll say it again and I'll say it again and again until I'm six feet deep. This one here, this one here, anybody who signs a Jacob, be it WWE or AEW, if you don't know how to book this top, top main event talent, you're going to lose the best out of him. And that's my words. And I also think he's one of the only uh, stars in this world who can skip NXT and go straight to the main roster. Yeah, well, you know, talent, you can't stop talent. But who knows? There's always a system in this industry, Joey. And not because he goes to NXT, they decide for him to go. If it's me or you or any wrestler's training, what do you got to bitch about? The WWE just signed you, be it NXT or whatever. Right. Solo did it, you know, and look where Solo came in to the right. So it must be, it's got to be timing. Maybe they're just wanting to test him over there in NXT. Right. Is he this? Is he that? You know, somebody, uh, you know, let me know how Jacob is at night. Whatever, man. Right. I just don't trust nobody when you're in the industry, man. It's just, you know, yes, sir. you got to see it coming a mile away wow. and you got to mm-hmm. hear it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not that saying that everybody else is not good people, right. but, you know, there's, it's a lot of jealousy in this industry, man. Yes, sir. It really is. Yes, sir. Um, before we uh, tap into the main topic of tonight, which is, of course, one of the greatest finishers of all time, I just got one more last question regarding the bloodline. Um sportskita.com I believe that's the name of the website uh, mm-hmm. uh, please don't crucify me if I got that wrong yeah, but, um, drink there, bro. sportskita.com mm. r- reported uh, about one of the conversations we had and they were talking about when you were mentioning how you can go Thank left you, or you can go right mm-hmm. or you can stay in, in the middle which is where you kind of always been so let's just say let's just say you get involved where where does Big Keish fit in, in, in the bloodline? Well, I got to fit somewhere at the top. You know, uh, some type of law and order. Something. By the way, I'm sorry, Keish, I'm sorry. By the way, uh, graphic artists out there, when you're doing posters, don't put Big Keish in the back. Like, I know, right, man. Bring him to the front. Like, who, who's, I mean, they're awesome posters, but yeah. <laughs> some of those bloodline posters, like, can we get Keish from out of the back and bring him from where you, uh, you belong? They don't love me no more, Joey. No, no, they I love like you. The fans man, love they you. love you. They love you. Just some of these I graphic artists. I haven't done nothing but give you all my heart and soul. Some out of there. these graphic artists need to smarten yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. They're big fans. It must, you know, hey, I. 
You know what? I, I don't. Hey, it's all good for me. No, no, you know, no. My, you belong. My, you belong in the, I know, but the way my, back. Come on. You know, I don't. I don't have an ego, so I don't. You know, I don't even know what that is. You yes, know sir. What I mean? Hey, as long, I guess I should just shut my mouth to be happy, just to be on the bolster. Ain't that what I always yes, say, right? Yes, just shut sir. your mouth. Yep, yep. Uh, quit being a uh, I don't know, quit being a jabroni for yourself. Mm-hmm, or, I don't mm-hmm. know. But yeah, it's it's all good. It's all good. So I mean. It's only like 4.30 in the morning, UK, but... Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I tell you what, we're going to go to one uh, more commercial, and then when yeah. we come back, we're going to discuss one of the greatest finishers of all time. We're talking about the stink face. We'll be right back with more Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. Rikishi Fatu. Off the Top. We're coming right back. Do you gargle your drink all the time or just sometime? And if it's alcohol, mm. it's just a habit with liquor. I don't know. <laughs> How did you get that habit? Just from BSK. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. I never like always. Some even years later, mm. I haven't touched it, but it's, it was such a habit. Jack Daniels. If, when I told you, when I say every night, mm. <laughs> <it's> unbelievable, <laughs> man. <laughs> You look like you're still yeah. shaking it off from yeah, the 90s. Yeah, because I'm I'm drunk just dicking about it, you know what I mean? <laughs> you, you know, it just felt like you're drinking gasoline and yes, you don't sir. want nobody to light a fire around you. The uh, freaking mouth will explode. But uh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it's, yeah, it was always when you drink Jack Daniels. We're going to do a BSK a episode. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We're going to get all the the deets in, in due time. Uh, well, get ready. You better have a bottle of Jack Daniels. Definitely. Yes, sir. All right, y'all, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back with more Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. Um, if you tuned in last week, you know right now we're going to talk about one of the greatest finishers of all the times. We're we're talking. I mean, not just know, sometimes. No, all the times. <laughs> all the time. That that that's a, a Santino Morella. All the times. Yeah, yeah. I had to take that. All the times. <laughs> you got to be all the time. Yeah. My name is Santino Morella. <laughs> Sorry, I had to uh, steal from him. All the times. All the times. <laughs> so you know, there's the there's the sharpshooter. There's the Canadian destroyer. Uh-huh. There's the pile driver. There's the tombstone Man. pile driver. There is uh, the. Five star frog splash. Mm. There is uh, the I can only uh, wish. elbow from the top rope, curse of Macho Man Randy Savage. And then, ladies Dig and it. gentlemen, Dig it. we're talking about one of the greatest finishers uh. this side of the Euphrates River. We're talking about the one, the only, the stink face, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Ay, ay, ay. Wow. Big Keish, first of all, who came up with the stink face finisher? Oh man, I, I don't know. It had to. It, was, it had to. Uh, till this day, I'm still looking for this young uh, old lady. Sounds like an old lady's voice. In Mobile, Alabama. It was a house show. Mm-hmm. Sunday, it was a house show against me and the boss man. Oh, Ray Trailer. Brother Ray Trailer. That's man. my man. He was a good dude, man. Love Cobb um, County, Georgia. Big but, boss, man. Come on now. So they, me and him, they married us to, you know, around the circuit for a bit. Mm-hmm. I was happy. You know, anytime they bring in some new talent or character, they're building that, number one, you get to get out early, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so me and Trailer, we'd open up the show, man, and we'd get out there. And, you know, we, Ray can go. You know what I mean? And when he throw them damn clothesline and them boots to the head, mm-hmm. you're definitely going to feel it, right? And so we would have our normal match, man. And, you know, one time I gave him a clothesline. Mm-hmm. And when I gave him a clothesline, you know, the who's kind of took a bump over there to the corner, but they didn't go down, right? So he just kind of just stumbled backwards and landed in the back turnbuckle with his back there. And, of course, this is the normal stink face, which we all know it today. Mm -hmm. I'm looking the opposite way. Uh And And all of a sudden, no, I didn't even turn yet. All of a sudden, I heard thump. (laughs) When I heard that thump, Mm -hmm. and I haven't turned yet. And uh, you can hear the crowd just roaring. I I said, what the hell are they roaring for? I, I clotheslined him a while back. And all I can hear was... And old voices. Rikishi! <laughs> Rikishi! Rikishi! 
Turn around and stick your butt in his face. And I tell you, Joey, mm -hmm. that's where this, like, I'm actually turning around, right? But I'm trying to find out who's yelling that. Mm -hmm. Until this day, I, I don't know who did it, right? But I can hear it around, around the front row, man, and this is where I turned. As I turn, now I'm looking at, say, your boss, man, and you're on your butt, uh -huh. and I'm looking at you, mm -hmm. and then I go to take a step. As soon as I go to take a step, I can hear, like, the fans. It's like a volcano start ready to erupt. Wow. It's what, what we call a pop. Mm -hmm. I go to take another step. Now it's getting louder and louder. Take another step, and it's getting louder. And I said, okay, I know every time I take a step, it's getting loud. But what if I just play with him and just slow down a little bit? And that's where the slow stepping took another step. Boom, son. Now, keep in mind, I had no idea what the hell I'm going to do because I only got so many steps to get to him. Mm -hmm. So finally I get there. The crowd's just erupted, you know, but I'm facing towards him, all right? And then, you know, he says to me, he looks at me, he says, we got him now, baby. <laughs> Turn around and stick your butt in my face. That's Big Boss Man? Big Boss Man. I said, I'm looking, I said, damn, now keep in mind, we've been going like, you know, 15 something minutes, baby oil, my hair is wet, you know, you know, leaking down the crack of my ass on my thong <laughs> and stuff, you know what I mean? So I go to turn around, man, and I turn around, you can hear the pop, boy. A people erupted, right? And you, you just hear, give it to me, baby. We got him now, give it to me, baby. And I just looked at him, I said, okay. Boom, man, I gave him the stink face. There was nothing else to do after that. I mean, no matter what spot we did after that, you couldn't get it as loud as a stink face. Boom, the ooze feed out. Kishi Savat kicked him. He land, dropped it, dropped the bonsai one, two, two three. three. And we went home after because there was nothing else to do. But that day, you know, in WWE, when you do these house shows, they got these agents and so forth, you know what I mean? And they'll have guys like, you know... Uh, Dean Malenko, you know, uh, uh, other cats like, you know, uh, Tony Guerrilla, Jack Lanza. These are all old school cats, man, are good, good people, you know. And uh, they would give a report back to the office, which match was good, which match they should, you know, put on Monday Night Raw and blah, blah, blah. So come Monday, I'm coming to TV. I never knew if I was going to, you know, be booked, uh, but I knew it was going to be some type of enhancement match working against, you know, an uh, enhancement guy uh, and so forth. But they got back, dude, and they said, we want you to do that move out there. Now, this is crossing into attitude there, right? Okay. It's crossing in now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. As that's basically where when the Rikishi character kind of stumbled in there. Anyhow, boom, we did that. Thank you, uh, Drink master. So the first recipient of the stink face is Big Boss Man? Big Boss Man. Wow. Yeah. And wow. then after that, when I debuted on Monday Night Raw, so they go by ratings and stuff like that. You know what I mean? They're monetizing all that. Right. You know, we all understand what that works like. You know, higher ratings, you know, higher money, blah, blah, blah. So, and also the merchandise. So everything just start, you know, the wheel just start turning fast for me. Before you know it, I had, you know, T-shirts out, merchandise, yellow glasses, you know what I mean? All kind of Rikishi commercials and stuff, you know. So, uh, you know, I was on to something. A after, what, five or six characters, you know, finally, you know, it felt good. Like, finally stuck with it long enough to really, you know, be able to, you know, have something that people can bite to, you know. So, b before... Er uh so WWE basically said, we want this every night. Like, this is your new finish. They, they, did they tell you, or is pretty much common knowledge, this worked, I'm going to do this every night? Or did they well, tell you? Well, for common knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody tells me what I'm going to do as far as, uh, you know, when I'm working my character. Sir. Right? For me, like, you know, we all know, like, no talent goes out there and not pulls out the stuff that people pop to. You're an idiot if you... If you don't think that way, mm -hmm. you, know, you got to go out there and you find like, you know, you know, consecutive uh, 
signature moves. Like mine's, I threw in the stink face, threw in the bonsai drop, you know, I threw in the savat kick, the 360 at 450 pounds. <laughs> you know, all these signature moves, you know, the headbutt, I wanted to change it. You know, for years, you know, uncles at the headbutt were always known for, you know, hard heads, you know. But, you know, and then my brother came in and, you know, revamped the Samoan, uh, the Samoan drop, you know, where you launch the guy to the air. And, and so I always want to, you know, out of my family, I tell each and every one of them that trained with me and up underneath me, you listen, you're going to be recognized as one of the family members. But picture this, when you see all of us on the poster, you want to be able to be, be able to be noticeable like stand up. We can only have so many long, you know, long, wet hair, right. you know, like, ah, ah, like that. Ah. That look, yeah, right? Yeah. You got to, so I'm the first bleach blonde hair in the crew. Yes. You know what I mean? So mm. I figured it out. It took me the hell of characters to figure it out, but the one thing is I never quit. Mm -mm. I never quit because I knew I was worthy. I knew it was just finding the right character that fit fit me and Kishi was was it. There's not too much that's off from how I really am with that character. Were you able to get used to that finish uh, real quick? Because you knew that was money. You knew, uh, like you said, the merchandise, cha-ching, cha-ching, yeah. you see the signs. So did you accept that as your new finisher right away? Because I, I know you, Big Kish, you're from the streets. That finisher is probably, you didn't probably start wrestling thinking you were going to end up sticking your ass in people's faces. Uh, I was already twerking before twerking was famous. <laughs> what you talking about? You and, know? And, and you know what? I have seen, TMZ actually did compare your ass to Kim Kardashian's, by the way. Yeah. So we all we all know, uh, I mean. Oh, my big booty freaks out there. <laughs> yeah. You know? Jeez, I would love to see a video with all of us out there together. You know, it's just, it's just one of those. One of those uh, photo type of things or video type of things. Something fun for the people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because now they're using celebrities in, you know, WrestleMania. They're mm. using celebrities in our pay-per-views and stuff. So why not? Right, right. Why not give something to the people that, you know what I mean, that they never seen before? Borderline. Not enough big bo big booty pictures out there. Nah. We definitely need it. Nah. Um, I, I, I remember last time I didn't even know who this chick Lizzo was. And I heard that, you know, somebody, a friend of mine said, Please. Man, I mean, did you go to the Lakers game? I said, hell no, nah, I didn't go to the Lakers game. And if I did, there. I would have been up in the box. But they said, well, this girl here was dressed like you. Her name is Lizzo. <laughs> dressed like you? Yeah, I had no idea who was Lizzo. <laughs> and they sent me the they sent me the picture. Who said that? Who they compared me, you to Lizzo? That's Dude, there was a picture that went trending that it shows Lizzo's butt. The, her outfit is like she had my wrestling gear on. Right? And hey, hey, big shout out to Lizzo if you're listening. Hey, yo. I love yeah. you, girl. No, Thank for you for yeah. representing Big Keys. But yeah. I don't even know if she knew there was a, 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 a thong wrestler out there. No, I don't think she knew I was out there wearing that type of wrestling gear, you know? Oh, my goodness. But yeah. Man, I would love to just show up just, uh, you know. Listen, listen, listen you know, um, <clears throat> you've done a lot of stink faces. Yeah. Um, were there any stink faces? given to somebody you didn't like and so let's say let's say you know what you knew ahead of time you have this guy you maybe didn't feel the best about mm -hmm. so maybe you ate a little extra spicy foods maybe i got you, you maybe you didn't shower up all that great in certain proportions you know what i mean mm -hmm. was there ever a time you gave a loaded stink face to anybody kishi fatu off the top we coming right back And you know what? I need to talk, just to talk about, you know how you run into friends sometime accidentally on this business, right? Mm -hmm. And he truly let me know that he was definitely one of my good friends. How's that? Because for him to say, stick your ass in my face, and never has been done before, <sighs> I didn't know how to. I didn't, I didn't know how to sit on his face. I really didn't, right? But then I knew, like. You know, once because I'm wide, so once I figured out when I sat back, 
it's like I'm sitting on a second turnbuckle. Mm. So then I start, you know, seeing from the re uh, the repeat uh, finish, right, of mm. uh, the footage. When I see it back, you know, I'm watching it back. I can see some of them, when I go to see them, they cheat up underneath that second turnbuckle. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they don't want your ass to get on their yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. Hi, yeah, yeah. I, I love just hearing you talk about Big Boss, man. Uh, he's one of my all-time favorites. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I had asked you before uh, we had technical uh, difficulties. Was there ever a time that you gave a loaded stink face? And what I mean by loaded, I mean yeah. like, you know, maybe you didn't shower enough or maybe you ate something a little spicy. You know, maybe mm -hmm. you, you, you know, you let a few rip before the match. You know what I mean? <laughs> Was there anybody who ever received a loaded stink face? Well, you, well, you know what? I'll tell you what. Yes, sir. As far as name-wise, no. You know, I, I the stink face was the stink face. You know, mainly me trying to protect them because of my weight. I keep in mind, like I said earlier, I, I never tried this move, nor do I know how I'm going to break the fall on these guys, right? As you, you do want to be safe, right? Yes, sir, you don't yeah. want to... Big 450-pound guy. Break their neck. Sitting on somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is the part where you know, people think it's funny when they watch it, mm -hmm. but there's skills to this <laughs> man. You got to have, you got to be having skills. You got to know how to shake you, your tail feather. When you back up a little bit, you know, you got to back up, arch a little bit, you know, and then you kind of find your way. This is when the swerve go back and forth, left and right, mm -hmm. just to find that hot spot right when it's there. Bam, and then... There's a, it's a science I to it. I was twerking before twerking got famous. Yes. You know, the yes. stink you face. working before and twerking so, was a thing. That's right. And I tell you what, you know... What's that? So all the my enhancement matches, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I brought it to these guys, right? Because mm -hmm. you're still, you know, wanting to get over, right? Because that's mm -hmm. what you're put out there, and that's what they're put out there for you. Mm -hmm. And so you just try to do your best. But, you know, coming from where we train... Mm -hmm. With our uncles, and, you know, we, we train to be uh, very safe out there with whoever we're wrestling, all right? So the sting phase was easy with these guys here with the enhancement because it helped me find my way, mm. you know, the pressure and, you know, how much weight to put on them and blah, blah, yes, blah. Sir. And so that was that. And, you know, <laughs> so out of the names, to go back to the names, mm -hmm. I'd have to say Brooklyn Brawler. Steve Lombardi? <laughs> Steve Lombardi. You wow, know what I mean? who, who we talked about on the he last was always episode. Like, yeah, he was always like, sometimes like, you know, he talked to us like he's close to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he was a real good friend of Pat Patterson back in the Thank day. Thank you, Drink Master. He yeah. was a real good friend of uh, Pat, Pat Patterson. Yeah, he's a real good friend like of A real Pat. good friend? I don't know what type of friend. I never was in their business, but... You know, yeah, you you hear you hear things. Don't, Their don't, stories don't I, are out there. They're out there. I give a shit, They're you know out what there. I mean? But we don't care. Yeah, when I got a chance to work, I just you know, I just hated you know, I hated people that were even affiliated with being like stooges. It could be Steve Lombardi. It could be somebody else that you know that that was in the office and so, so he forth. caught a loaded stink face. I gave him my, you know, I got three pair of trunks. Mm -hmm. You know, I got the one that never comes out the Ziploc bag. Mm -hmm. I got the one that was semi-washed, meaning when I say semi-washed, it was worn the night before but hung over the AC in the hotel room. Right. And then you mm -hmm. got, I got hella ones that are nice, <laughs> brand new. Those are the ones that I wear when I'm working against top, top talent or people that I don't. You know, I really didn't give a shit who I was giving the stink face because right. the fact of the matter is, is like when I came down, you know, came coming back to this new character uh -huh. and I walked through the, you know, the wrestlers, man, their trip, you know what I mean? You know, they'll, they'll, they'll want to say something, but if it's towards a person that they know they can't, they can't be dealt with, they're going to keep it to themselves and kind of just, you know, backdoor you, meaning talk to somebody else about it, right? Instead of having the balls to come sit, but so when I'm walking down the aisle, you know, a lot of people standing around and going through this. Shit, but I'm walking down with that new thong on, and, and you know, I can feel people talking shit. Mm -hmm. I can feel it, and it got you know when I'm walking by, you know, I walk by, I can see Big Show, I can see other guys like uh, who else, uh, uh, Kamala, the, uh, you know, uh, the Ugandan Luke. giant was talking. No, shit. no, no, I'm just saying. 
I can feel certain people. I didn't say that they was talking shit. Oh. I'm naming the names. Here. Oh, yes, sir. Let's clarify this. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. And so, you know, Steve Lombardi was there. Brother. You know, he was one of the guys there, Pat Patterson. So they were sitting there talking. And I just got, you know, you know I could tell when people start talking shit, you almost feel your ass start getting hot. Right? And then I can hear people, <laughs> boy, look at that. And so in my mind, the first TV I came out, that put a stamp in my brain, Joey, mm -hmm. and meaning that every motherfucker that I'm working with, you can rest assured, if I knew or had any doubt that you was the one that was talking behind my back with this new character, you can rest assured your ass going to get that. That third thong. <laughs> Steve Lombardi got the third thong. Pat wow. Patterson got the third thong. As the bat came out and he had the, he gave me the stink face, but it looked like he had like stains on there. Mm. All right, rest, rest in peace. But, you know, he was a mind, a genius, mm -hmm. but never really, you know, and I can say this because we didn't have that relationship. Okay. Wish I would. I never did anything to this man and so forth. But, hey, I guess when you have your favorites, you got your favorites, man. Right. I'm just not the one, man. I I, I earns my respect. So you and Pat Patterson didn't really get along? I, I just, we didn't, not that we didn't get along. We wasn't buddy buddies like he is. With Brawler. To different talents sure, yeah. and stuff. And no, okay. hey, it is what it is, man. But it didn't stop Big Keith from moving forward. Yes, sir. Because at the end of the day, I laughed all the way to the bank. Hey, mm -hmm. You dig? Hot doggy. Yeah, hey, y'all going to learn something from me today, man. Y'all wrestlers, you're going to learn something. You've already said a lot that if anybody who's aspiring to be a wrestler, like, you could rewind a little bit, like, the stuff you said at the beginning of this episode, uh, for any aspiring uh, but, uh, person out there that wants to be a wrestler, there's some uh, golden uh, nuggets up in this uh, conversation. But speaking of um, being safe, I want to know how the stink face came about with Stephanie McMahon. Uh, did she get the first, the second, or the third pair? Oh, gee. She had to you get the... She had yeah, to get yeah, the yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What do you think? That's right. I was still there the next day. Yes, sir. So let, let me ask, let okay. me ask this. Let, let's, walk, let's, let's dissect this a little dissect bit. Dissect it a little bit. All so right. your boss is Vince McMahon. Yeah. You're sticking your ass in his daughter's face. Okay. So... Did they? They obviously had to approach you. Did they? Did they clear that with you? Hey, you're gonna give Stephanie the the stink face. I mean, no, obviously it wasn't I your didn't, idea. I didn't know until like, I was walking out the gorilla. Wow. I had no idea. Yeah. Who broke? I, who, who told you you're gonna stink face Stephanie McMahon? As soon as I walked out the gorilla, I got it. I think it was Johnny Ace who said, "You're gonna stink face Stephanie. Make it a good one or something like that." I don't know. No, like, so no prep, like like Vincent no, take you man. to the side and like Kishi. No, nah. this is my daughter. Or no. Like, no, he did that to himself. <laughs> <laughs> Before Yo, I, when you I got him prepped, when I gave face, him yeah. the stink face, if we're gonna get into that. Hey, Kishi, <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I, I hope you washed your ass. <laughs> did he really? <laughs> yeah, he did. Please yes, walk sir. us through that conversation with Vince McMahon. How did well, Vince McMahon it, prep for you to stick your ass in his face? Dude, he was excited, man. What? He was excited because he was like, you know, this is going to be the segment of the night, you know? And so they just came, you know, I'd seen him going through it with, who was it, that JR, they had uh, Trish Stratus, right? And then uh, blah, 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 here I come and so forth, you know? And so I'm coming through gorillas. Oh, my goodness. Excuse you. <laughs> I hope you wash that ass of yours. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and then my mind says, yes, sir. You already know, but I don't know how it's going to come out because from now until then, shit, I ate some, I ate some bad food from the, you know, from, <laughs> the, from the Gatorade. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but, hey, man, it was, uh, you know, honestly, just to talk about I still got a job the next day. Yes, sir. So, obviously, we all obviously know Obviously, you were safe. You took care of Stephanie come and on. the boss's daughter. That's oh. what you're supposed to do, I think, right? Yeah, yes, sir. So um, well, if I was probably on my way out the next day, or you know, I, I probably would have really just laid it on him. Yes, sir. You know, I'd have had to probably just you know, pooped a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, boss. <laughs> hey, yo, uh, we got our first fan question. Yeah. We, oh, we do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you know, I'm I'm on the YouTubes and mm -hmm. I'm I'm, I'm uh, monitoring because right we on. got so much good feedback from the fans. Good, uh, and we appreciate that honestly. So um, more questions, the better. I'm gonna field those questions. Me, I'm gonna field those questions myself, and I'm gonna present them to Big Keish. So um, our first fan question from YouTube. 
Um, did you ever get any heat from anyone for doing the stink face? Like maybe you did it a little too. St- we know you don't do work stuff. Uh. We know that. We know you're safe. But did somebody get their feelings hurt? Like maybe oh he did it a little too long, or did you get any kind of heat with anybody <laughs> for doing the stink face? I think it was Eric Bischoff. <laughs> yeah, so. You remember when uh, Eric Bischoff was... Of course. Just coming to the with, WWE. With three-minute warning, I think y'all did yeah. something. Yeah. But they had that, you know, that back and forth with mm-hmm. WCW and mm-hmm. that war, right? And then finally he comes through. So then, boom, she gets... Uh, you know, I came out as a, as a drag queen. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, my Remember God. Remember that? Well, I forgot what the... Well, I that, know you uh, probably didn't forget about well, that. Yeah. I, I, so I was locked away. Downstairs, nobody even seen me for TV. Mm-hmm. So I was downstairs, and uh, you know they brought all the makeup crew, and because they had to, you know, plaster plaster my face up just so I can look like I almost looked like Medea, right? <laughs> hello, you know, I was looking, hello, 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 hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like Medea, right? And so I was down there for a long time, and then finally, when it was my time, I came up. Now I'm coming through Gorilla. But you see all the boys and everything. Nobody had any idea it was me. Because I what? was dressed. Nobody had knew it. Nobody knew it. So here, here I come. And Steph calls me out. And so I came out. Oh, it was a pay-per-view here in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Came out. We all know the story. Keith dropped Eric Bischoff. You know, what's her name? Kissed me first. Right? Mm-hmm. Stephanie kissed me. And mm-hmm. then... I was that kiss there where I was like, you know, when you're kissing the boss's daughter. There's no tongue. No, absolutely not. None. I'm, I'm biting my lips, I'm biting my lips like this, you know. And so I'm biting my lips, boom, and then turn around, Savat kick, you know. Eric, he's laughing because we're kissing. <laughs> and I Savat kick him, he falls in the corner, and I rip off the makeup. Man, that damn thing was trying to rip that, that uh, it was like rubber on my face. Ah. Uh. And it was, you know, it was damn ripping my mustache. And yeah. I get really, you know. It was like some FX stuff. It was like really. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I was trying my best to, you know, rip that thing off. When I ripped it off, people seen who it was. Boy, I backed it up. And I gave him a stink face. Man, that stink face must have lasted two, three minutes. That long. And you got hot? I knew it was hot. I knew it was hot. I've never given him a stink face ever again. Let but... me ask you this. I'm sorry, Keish, real quick, because he... At one yeah. point in time, kind of disrespect you on on the air. Mm-hmm. Was that a little bit of a receipt? Because you remember? I don't know. I don't. What? Do you I, remember the time where uh, Eric Bischoff gave away the results uh, on a WWE match and he mentioned your name? I he, had no idea. Yes, sir. He goes, "What are you gonna do? You gonna tune in and see Fatu versus Vader again or something?" Uh huh. I thought maybe that was a receipt. No. Well, if it if he did say it, then I guess that was a receipt. Yes, sir. Because had I knew he did say that, it would it would have probably been the longest stink face ever. But you know, it's, it's weird because me and me and Eric are cool, man. Yeah, no, I, I mean, see him all the time and mm-hmm. stuff. But you know, I, I guess you know when people on radio, man. You know, they got to say what they got to say to draw. And that could have been a call from the office or someone in, in the earphones telling the announcers what to say and, and yeah. yada, yada, yada. But we're talking about the stink face. So he got hot from the stink face. Let's talk about somebody yeah, right. who might have been overly excited to take the stink face. Because we all know Rico uh, was a little excited <laughs> to take the stink face. But besides Rico, was, was there anybody else that comes to memory that was like, Keisha, I'll take the stink face. I'll do it. I'll do it, brother. I was, um, anybody? Man, I, you know what? It's weird. The, the, the divas. I mean, I'm talking about they had no problem taking that. I mean, I probably want to say uh, Trish Stratus was one of the first divas. Really? As we all see that famous picture of the first sting face to Trish. You, you can't even see her face. All you see is this <laughs> a side blonde, blonde hair <laughs> off the side of my hips, you know? And I, I think, boy, I think poor girl there, boy, that's, yeah, that was, yeah, I think that was a straight okay. all nose or something, you know? Okay, okay. Um, uh, you know, Don Marie was another one. Yeah, from ECW, Don yeah, Marie. Okay. Yeah, she was, uh, all the divas. She was um, excited? She was like... She was excited. They give me, I mean, the girls used to be... Oh, like if you knew they were tag teaming together against me and who and who, mm-hmm. you know, that would, oh, I wanted to take the stink face. Mm-hmm. Oh, I wanted to take. So I would just adapt a match just to give them what they want so they can mm-hmm. take the stink face. And, you know, believe it or not, the stink face, 
you know, everybody wanted to join that list because you knew damn well when you got that stink face, your ass definitely going to get talked about, you know? And speaking of lists, Keish, we're going to go to one more commercial break, and when we return, I'm going to read off a list because it's a, a list of the who's who in professional wrestling, and they took the stink face, and I want you to tell us, and I want you to tell the world who you consider the greatest recipient of the stink face when we return with more Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is TMD. Hey, do you want to get more eyes on your business? Cool. Well, all you got to do is write us, rikishifatu.com, and we will make that happen. All right. Sounds like a zombie <laughs> apocalypse out there. What was that, my second drink? Yeah, damn, be... yeah these, these <laughs> are awesome well, drinks, hey. man. Thank Tell you, boy. What is the name of this drink again? Uh, suicide Blanc. Suicide Blanc. Bomb. bomb. Suicide Bomb. Suicide, suicide Bomb. bomb. Journey, see if we had give us the bomb. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Big yeah. Keish. Um, I'm going to read off the list of uh, Stink Face recipients because it's a pretty much a who's who of wrestling. And I know there's not everybody here, but uh, damn it, this, li this list is impressive. And I, and I want you, maybe your greatest your greatest recipient of the stink face isn't on my list but just listen up this is uh what i got so far uh you have stink faced uh stephanie mcmahon eric bischoff check check matt hardy check lita check eddie and chavo guerrero check at the check. same time check check kurt angle check road dog jesse james check one of my all-time favorites mr perfect check <sighs> vince mcmahon <laughs> vince mcmahon your boss check your boss Double check. Uh, Paul Heyman. Check. Booker T. Check. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably the only stink face anybody threw up at. Who do you think sold the stink face the best? Oh, well, this is a no-brainer for me. I'd have to say uh, Mr. Perfect. Because with the towel? With the towel. So here's the thing. Like, mm. you know, everybody sells a stink face, but it's how they sell it to make theirs unique, right? So Booker, boom, sells the stink face, throws up. <laughs> That's going on highlights, right? Of course, you know, the boss's mm -hmm. stink face is going on highlights. Of course, Stephanie McMahon, the boss's daughter, that goes on highlights. Mm -hmm. But in the earlier time, the, the birth of the stink face, after, you know, working with boss man, then I was married to Kurt Henning, Mr. Perfect. In my book, mm -hmm. is one of the best workers in the industry. You talk about he can go both ways at a baby face, as a heel. For for me, he's more, you know, at his best as a heel. And you talk about how this guy can really put a person over. Oh, you see, like every bump that he takes, he 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 always add his extra athletic ability to it doesn't have to but just because he's taken that that move from a baby face or a heel right. he makes it more than what it is and that's due to his professionalism mm -hmm. that's due to his athletic ability mm -hmm. and it has to do with something as far as just being a friend he understood the assignment yeah, he understood and when he he, uh, you know, when I give him a stink face and he <laughs> rammed that damn uh, towel in, uh, the only thing I was concerned about was, damn it, there better not be no skid marks on there. <laughs> it's a white towel. It's a white freaking <laughs> towel. And so that happened out there in uh, in Australia. And, uh, yeah, Kurt Kurt really put over the stink face. And every oh, man, time. we love Mr. I Perfect do, He so never much. complained about it, too. Really? Yeah, he never complained. I mean, he was always like, he was one of the guys that, he could have been in the BSK because he okay. he was loved by everybody, man. But yeah, I'd have to say the number one. I'd say, mm -hmm. you know, I'd have to say the Kurt. Uh, you know, he uh, sold Kurt it Henning. the best. I would say he sold it the best. Wow. Then, then in the Booker T. Okay, you know, he, Vince he McMahon. Of course, okay. we've seen his facial. Yeah, of course, we've seen Stephanie's facial. Uh -huh. So, it's really hard. It's a hard list to to narrow down because every single person. You know, I didn't know if they were selling or not because when you look mad after you take the stink face, uh -huh. that's the reaction you're supposed to look like, right? So they could have been really mad, but I didn't know it. 
and those that really just, you know, start wiping their nose, they, ah, uh, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Hey, yeah, who knows? I, I could have cut one that time, man. <laughs> I, I got two more questions for you, Big Keish, before we um, send uh, send you off for the night. Um, were you ever the recipient of the stink face yourself? Because I saw Chavo, he had, he had almost gotten the stink face on you. Yeah. Was there ever a point in your... Uh... I think Pat Patterson gave me one. Really? Remember when he had the Fruit of Loom's white underwear and he, with he skid marks on there? Yeah. Go figure, right? Wow. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember anybody... Uh, man, I, I really can't remember who, but I just remember that with Pat Patterson okay. had, had, you know, freaking... Uh, Fruit of Loom underwear is on <laughs> the, the white one. And skid marks. And it had the skid marks on it. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah. I'm sure there were other, you know, females, uh, okay. whatever that, you know. Took Would that be called the sweet face? Uh, powder fresh, I guess. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know, but I, I listen here. For the record, you know, they called it the stink face. And, you know, the one thing you didn't ask is who came up with uh, as far as calling the stink face, the mm -hmm. stink face. Mm -hmm. So I got to go on record and I got to put it out there. You can see this on Raw, on the YouTube or whatever. But I got to give the big shout out to my man out there, Chris Jericho. He coined the phrase stink yeah. face? So, you know, you remember when Y2J? he used to open oh, up man. Y2J was Raw is Jericho. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I was working with Chris, you know, on on Raw. And during his promo, he, he mentioned the stink face, and that's that's what I went with. You know, because it, it just so fit. Much stuff. You know, it just fit. Yeah. So it worked as a heel. It worked even better as a baby face because mm -hmm. the people uh, that the fans that when they didn't like a wrestler, mm -hmm. well, they they were hoping that my ass was stinky <laughs> to be able to give somebody a right, stink right, face. Right, right, right. You know, one of the villains or the heels that they didn't like. So. So yeah, so big shout out to Chris Jericho. To Chris Jericho wow, for, that that's some insight. He came up right with there. the name. Yeah. Of, okay, uh, all right. Know, so the stanky face. I like to change it, boy. The stanky face. The stanky face. Let's put some stank on it. Some extra stank on it. But it really don't smell like stanky. Though. I don't I'm, think so. I'm part of fresh. Yeah, man. you're like roses. You know me. I, I always it. smell. Well, good, you man. know, um, I could say yeah. that I joined. Uh, I can say from experience. Oh, okay. Um, I've uh, taken the stink face twice. At least in my life, and I can say I can vouch. Yeah, yeah, yeah it smells fresh. like roses. Yeah, for sure. One of the powder fresh. That's because I like you. Yeah, yeah thank yeah. you. I'm glad I didn't get the I third like uh, uh, the, uh, the, pair the, of trunks. The third thong. The third thong. thong I, for I, I thong, did not, thong, I did not thong. get. That. <laughs> People don't know what trunks are. But I gotta yeah. tell you, your life does flash before your eyes when right? you're looking up and you see that. You know, go, go figure. That man. derriere. All the, all these years, man, I've been looking for my money maker, and it's right, right behind. there behind you. Right behind me, man. The, she was twerking and just dropping bombs and busting the move. In more the way ways than one. In more ways than one, you're all dropping ways, bombs. So, and lesson learned, believe in yourself. Yes, sir. Don't let people tell you what you can and cannot do. You know, don't judge a book by its cover. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? You, you you see it and you hear it coming a mile away. And by the time it gets you coming a mile away, you better learn how to adapt mm -hmm. and smarten up. Yes, sir. So I, um, we're going to end uh, with two more questions. Uh, Big Keish, who would you consider your greatest recipient of the stink face? My greatest? Yes, sir. The Rock. The Rock. Wow, yeah. If you're gonna, I got to I gotta go with the great yeah, one. If you're going to give yeah, the stink face, you give it to the GOAT. Got to go with the GOAT, man. Okay. Um... You know, so there it is, ladies and gentlemen. The greatest recipient of the stink face is The Rock, mm -hmm. who is uh, one of the members of the bloodline. Do you think you would ever give it to him again? Well, you know, as we always say in this business, mm -hmm. never say never. And I'll leave it at that. Yes, sir. Uh, we're going to end it um, on the hip hop tip. This is uh, from Natasha Young on the oh. YouTube page. Okay. Yes, sir. So this is a fan question. And okay. Natasha Young, she wants to know who your favorite hip artist of all hip hop artist of all time is. Hi, Natasha. Um, I do. Oh. And she actually called you Big Daddy. She said, "Ask Big Daddy." Big Daddy. Who is yeah. favorite hip hop <laughs> artist? Did it, did it, did it, did it. I just I couldn't say, "Hey, Big go, Daddy." Go figure. Big Daddy, who's your favorite you, hip hop artist? You know, I couldn't say you, like what that. What my answer is going to be? Who's that, sir? Heavy D. 
Heavy D and the boys. The girls are girls that love me. Come on now. You know Heavy D. He's the overweight lover, Heavy D. Well, Heavy D, I kind of remind myself of him when when I'm out there in the ring just having a great time. He was one of the guys I always think about was Heavy D. Wow. Heavy D. You know, he used to come out looking fly, so Mm -hmm. I I switched to that Rikishi wear, leather coat and leather pants. You know, and I always wanted to, you know, I, I wanted... When people look at big guys, mm-hmm. that we too was also cool, like you know what I mean. Like we was always, I don't look at people. Oh, you're too fat. You're too this. You're that, and all this stuff here. And so I utilize that platform, man. As soon as I got that green light, you know, and then you start figuring stuff out. Huh? I got 15 million people watching me mm-hmm. on Monday Night Raw. 30 million maybe watching SmackDown. Mm-hmm. Like, how can a big guy like me? And secretly saving big, big lives out there. Big, you know, women that's been bullied. Big men that's been bullied. Like, you not too this and that. You know, all that stuff. And, dude, hey, here it is. Heavy D, Heavy D, you saved my life too, man. Wow. You know, I can kind of see that now. Yeah. I mean, that, wow. You see that how is... the swag got. Yeah, I got a little bit man. of Heavy D swag in what's your What's your favorite song? Because I ain't going to lie. I love Now That We that's Found my, Love. That's my what song. What we going to do? That's my jam right With there, it. man. That is hey, my shit. And that tune will make you move. Yes, yes. You no. know what I mean? There's so. just certain, certain rappers out there. You know, I like I like clean, message, fun type of lyrics in the rap. Oh, man. Right? And then I also like lyrics in there that has a message in there of a cause, of a purpose, you know, but the beat has to be, it has to be ghetto fabulous. Yes, sir. The beat always has to be ghetto fabulous to me. That's right. You know what I mean? I'm That's not right. too much into the, you know, the techno type of vibe. Mm-hmm. I'm not knocking it. it mm-hmm. I just haven't found nothing that works for me and that. So that's why, you know, for me, it's, you know, like like we say, Rikishi Fatu off the top. And that top there that I'm talking about is being connected with my love of hip hop, my love of all the artists that are out there that, you know, as a young kid, I still wish to this day, mm-hmm. you know, that I can meet some of those guys that are passed on, you know, like the fat boys. Oh, sorry, I just spit all over this mic over here. Sorry. Hey, there, there he goes. Damn, Keish, that was that was dope. You was feeling that vibe, wasn't it? You should Fat throw that. Boys. You should throw that on your new album that's going to be coming out. You oh, need to man. do a little beatboxing on that. Enjoy. They get ready, boy. Man, we're going to talk yeah. about your new album uh, yes, throughout sir. this uh, time. Your comic book. You got a lot going on. But before yeah. we uh, say, and uh, my Funko Pop man. finally dropping WrestleMania. Yo, I'm not going to lie. I showed up at 7 a.m. at Target a few days yeah. ago. It wasn't there. Yo, it's in high demand, and you're not going to find it. You can go on eBay, and they're they're selling it. They're, it's it's going to be a hot. Item, but I tell you what, we're going to talk about that throughout this uh, and more. We got plenty more to talk about before we uh, end the night off. I'd like to give a little RIP to uh, Virgil. Here we go. A little RIP to the Heavy D, and uh, one more RIP to uh, Rick Hall. You know, very close (laughs) to the Knox Pro family. Uh, Mm -hmm. Man, I gotta tell you, what a loss. Our condolences uh, to uh, Rick Hall and his family. Um, Very big loss here at Knox Pro. Uh, love you, Rick. Love you, you know, Rick. Thank you for all you've Virgil, done. Virgil, Heavy for, D. You know, Knox Pro for the last 15 years. My condolences goes out to Rick Hall's family, his kids, you know, all his friends, his clients, and so forth. And uh, this guy here, he 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 was a ride or die with us. Been with us since we opened the door 16 years ago. And he rode with us till, till the wheels fell off. And so this one here is for you, Rick. Hall and the who's out there? Yes, sir. Mike Jones, Mike Jones. Manguia. I'll see you in heaven. Manguia. Mm. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. We'll catch you next time with more Off the Top with Rikishi Fa 2. And Any last remember, words over there? I always remember, Joey. I always remember it's free to be kind. And always, always smarten up. It's time to smarten up. It's time to say things that people are scared to say. It's time to bring you on into my home so you know what time it is. In the locker room, in the hip-hop world, in the wrestling world. You might even come into my kitchen. Ladies and gentlemen, tune in next week. We're going to talk about the bloodline 
timeline. We're going to take it as early as Peter Maivia and as current as your son, Solo Sequoia. But I got to ask you, that's a really big time timeline, Big Quiche. Who is your favorite member in the bloodline? Well, you know what? It, 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 that's a big family tree. So, you know, I got to relapse my mind a little bit. And uh, I kind of want to give the insides on the fans exactly what this family is. You know, as far as having good times and bad times, and even some of them that we fought against. Tune in next week. Catch the Rikishi Fatu podcast streaming on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube.